The Chosen recently released the first three episodes of season four in theaters, and when I went to see them, there was a lot of great things in the first three episodes until the ending. I want to talk today about the ending of episode three of season four because it's really important for you to understand what are the issues with it because today I want to explain why I see it as one of the worst, if not the worst scene The Chosen has ever put out in their show. And uh, there's a lot of issues that I want to cover today. I'm going to try to make them as orderly as possible, but this video may turn into a bit of a rant video just because of how many issues I found with this scene and all of the problems and things that annoyed me and got on my nerves. So I just hope that you guys can buckle up today and uh, just appreciate some sound criticism. Uh, if The Chosen or anyone is watching this, I do not hate you. Uh, I'm just hoping that I can give a little bit of criticism and hopefully help the show, maybe hopefully help the uh, people in charge. And this is not an attack against anyone, but this is extremely uh, important, everything that I found, because I, there are some major issues that I think that are with this scene. And uh, I kind of want to get into them today. Now, before I start, I just want to preface this with the fact that I have not seen episodes four to six yet, even though they're out in theaters right now. I probably will go see them, so I may have slightly differing views after that. But this is basically just my own opinion. I've only seen a couple other people talking about this uh, video, but I'm going to, or this episode, sorry. But. I'm just going to basically give you my thoughts and some of my initial thoughts when I left the theater. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Now, if you haven't seen the show, let me uh, just pr again preface this with there will be spoilers for episodes one to three. So if you have not seen it and you are worried about that sort of thing, there are major spoilers from those first three episodes. So just get out of here if you haven't seen those episodes. Anyway, though. In episode three of The Chosen season four, Rayma uh, is killed. Rayma is killed by Quintus at the ending of episode three. And immediately when I saw this scene, I thought, oh my goodness, there's been so much good stuff in these last three episodes. And then now they have to end it like this. And it was a real downer to me because immediately as I was watching it, it really took away my suspension of disbelief. And I'm going to get into a lot of reasons why. Uh, there's really three main categories in this, which are biblical issues, moral issues, and story issues. And I'm going to try to break down each one. Uh, but again, they kind of do overlap. So there might be a little bit of that uh, in the video. But firstly, I do want to mention that my, my first impression was that it felt lazy. It really felt like cheap uh, drama. You know, it, you know, in the, the Shakespearean plays, like, you know, like in Romeo and Juliet, where, you know, uh, Juliet falls asleep and Romeo thinks she died. So he kills himself and then she finds him dead. So she kills herself. It really felt like something along those lines, like they were really forcing something that just really didn't work. And, and we know, too, that this will probably be a very, uh, lazy way of making Thomas, Thomas the doubter, which obviously he wasn't really Thomas the doubter. He was, he just doubted because he wasn't there when Jesus came to the 11 other disciples or 10 other disciples. But it feels like it's really lazy. And then also I'm hearing that they're actually going to use this to basically be the reason Judas betrays Jesus, which is hilarious, I think, because I, when watching this, I felt like if Jesus actually uh, had done something along these lines, that all the disciples would be qualified in leaving him. But anyway, I'll we'll get to that later. Uh, now, another thing was that this also feels like fridging. Basically, the character of Rayma is being, there's this term called fridging that people use. And it's something I got a lot of in Mission Impossible 7, which uh, there were a bunch of issues with that movie. I know a lot of people liked it, and I won't go into it today. But basically, they kind of take this, uh, woman character and just kind of completely ruin her for the sake of the story and it just did, didn't didn't work there it didn't make sense and it didn't work in this in this uh, show either and it just really felt made it feel more forced that's what I was getting the whole time another thought that I had was uh, that this felt like it's gonna drain on the whole rest of the show like immediately when I was seeing it and seeing her die I thought oh my goodness they only have seven seasons. They don't have 30 seasons here. And so they're wasting time on unbiblical events now. And, you know, and, that, and then they've said other things like they're getting rid of certain other biblical events. And it just feels like you could have just not done this and you could have actually gotten so much better uh, biblical content and everything. And it's just I knew that this felt like it was going to drain 
on the whole show and the whole rest of the season, especially um, because you can't like get past some major death and Jesus just standing there watching. Like that's a major event. Um, but anyway, uh, another thing I felt, which I'll get into a little bit more in the moral and biblical issues, but I also felt, okay, this is immediately going to overshadow any future healing that Jesus ever does because Every time anyone ever comes for G- to Jesus, like who would come for, to Jesus for healing anymore? It's like it doesn't feel like he will answer with a yes, right? And it, it immediately overshadows anything else Jesus does. And then another story issue with this is just that Jesus' garment literally heals anybody that touches it. So that's a biblical fact. So it it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense in the show how Thomas wouldn't just pick Wayma up and touch her to his garment and be healed. Like that's a literal biblical fact. And it was the same thing with like little James. They did the same thing, but they doubled down on this whole thing, which is really a shame. And I would have really preferred if they had just written her off the show rather than just bring her back only to kill her. In fact, actually when I was seeing Thomas and Rayma talking, I, uh, and talking about their marriage, I honestly felt like, Hey, what I would do is on the episode that they get married, I would start it with way in the future Thomas and Wayma being killed like as martyrs, which again, this was not T- Wayma killed as a martyr. This was a freak accident that some evil guy committed. So it would have been way, had made way more much impact if they had actually stuck to the biblical uh, course of events, which again, it, we know from the Bible, what Paul said that many of the disciples, if not all the disciples other than him, he actually said in first Corinthians nine, were all married. So again, this is another story issue because like, again, Thomas is never going to get married after this. Like that, that's just not happening. You don't get past a traumatic event like that. And so, and if, and if you believe that God just randomly wants to take away, uh, the wife that you wanted to marry, then it just doesn't make any sense. So anyway, uh, you know, and then another thing is cause some people have been saying like, Oh, if, you know, um, <clears throat> the disciples, it, it, it says that only Peter was married, but it doesn't, that doesn't mean that n- none of the others were married. In fact, in Jewish culture, most of the young people would be, one of most of the people would be married very young and then have a bunch of children already. Um, so actually it's breaks canon more to make it that Thomas isn't getting married than that, he, you know, his, his wife that he's about to marry dies. Like that's, that's ridiculous. And so, uh, then another thing that feels forced is that Thomas and Rayma literally ran towards Quintus. Now, this is, again, this is another issue you see with amateur writing, which I'm shocked actually is happening in The Chosen because it's really an amateur writing mistake is to make your characters make dumb decisions for the sake of the plot So because you don't know what to do, so you just make the characters make dumb decisions so that the plot can move along. And that's basically what happens. Thomas stays there. And again, I really felt like something was off immediately when Jesus ran away and left his disciples there before securing their safety. But Thomas he is, and Waymar just left there. And Thomas goes and finds Wayma, who was safe before, and then grabs her and runs towards Quintus. And they both, and, and she gets stabbed, which again, it's just all super forced. It's really painful to watch. It was painful, especially for me to watch. Um, it really feels for like it's a dramatic event meant to like just inspire shock, just for shock value. Uh, and then again, this makes uh, Weymouth's father, Kaufney, right? What he was talking about. If you go back through the seasons, like it's not like, like this is just one episode. You have to like go back and remember all of the history with Wayma and Thomas. And, um, and so it really makes her father right. He was worried for her safety and yet he gave – her to Jesus, which again, I'll, I'll get into more in the moral issues, but, um, but yeah, it makes her, him right. And then it also, it just feels rushed. The, the interaction Jesus has with the Pharisees is all rushed over, which again, and then it felt like Jesus' words were like being repeated multiple times. I don't know if that was like a mistake or what, but like the same words Jesus was saying several times. And it just feels like it's all leading up to that one event that's meant as a cliffhanger, which was just really strange. And it just should not have been there. I don't think at all. Um, and then it, you know, it's going to mess up a lot of things I feel in the rest of the show. Now, that's some of the story issues. I want to get to some of the other issues. Immediately when the first words that I said after um, seeing what had happened in this episode well, was, well, that's not Jesus. Here are some of the more issues. So firstly, Jesus encourages their marriage in The Chosen. And if you actually go back, it's very interesting that if you go back to like episode two, Jesus is basically like saying to Thomas, hey, what gift are you going to get Wayma 
for her marriage, right? And then throughout the whole show, if you go back to the last season, actually, he sent Thomas towards um, the like the direction of Kauf- of Kaufney, Weymouth's father, because he Jesus was literally saying like, go ask him for permission to marry her, right? And so Jesus basically is put in this really morally questionable state where he's literally uh, like basically pushing their marriage. And it's really strange that he just like, he's pushing, it's like God, the, it's like the message of the show is like God teases us. And it, it's really strange. Again, in, and, and then in this episode too, Jesus is basically, everybody's saying that this is a bad decision and that, um, that it, you know, like basically this is a reckless thing to go out in the middle here. And it just makes Jesus morally questionable that everybody's telling him it's a bad thing. And then one of his disciples is literally killed. Like when Jesus heals the guy with the blind eyes, it's the moment is not really for the guy that gets healed, but it's actually for Jesus basically instigating trouble with the Pharisees. And then again, literally one of his disciples gets he- killed. Um, did I say healed before? I don't know. Killed. And so that's what one of the things that makes this really strange. And then another thing is that Jesus just leaves. Like when everybody's in trouble, like Jesus just runs away, like literally. And then he feels like something's wrong and he comes back and he just stands there. He just watches, which really is sick. Just watching that was really sick. Just watching Thomas like freak out was really crazy to watch. And then Jesus just stands there, which is again, another reason I said it took away my suspension, just disbelief because it just wasn't Jesus, you know, um, because Jesus would heal her. And again, I'll get to that in the biblical issues, but, um, you know, in, in the show, in the last couple episodes, Jesus was literally told by Wema, you're like a father to me. And he literally said, I haven't brought, I didn't come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. And literally by the end of episode three, Wema is stabbed through with a sword, which is one of the craziest things. It brings like a whole new context to that meaning. Like Jesus is basically saying uh, that you're going to be stabbed through through a sword. And that's basically what, like, if you'd like think about it in that way, it changes things so much. And it's like, absolutely crazy because Quintus Quintus's actions were evil and obviously Jesus is not for evil Jesus is against evil and Jesus is against the things that sin brought into the world like death and destruction so um it's just it's it's really it's really kind of crazy how Jesus kind of pushes their marriage too and pushes them being together and, and all of that and is happy for them and then all of a sudden he's not willing to heal her and he's like it's not it's not her time so it was kind of crazy and then also especially that it's this is season four like we're like over halfway through the show now and is it really a time for jesus to be morally questionable like the last season they kind of did that and it was dumb then too with little James and like Peter and Eden, but then now they're doubling down on it. So it just, we never really see Jesus in a, like a, a position of like being a, a strong leader, being a strong character with a strong will. It's just kind of Jesus doing like really strange things that he probably would not have done. So it's just, it's just kind of strange. Again, Jesus was someone who had compassion. So, you know, if you, if you look at the interactions between Jesus and Wema's father and how he's like, I feel sorry for you, you know, and everything. Now, again, this is going to ruin any chance of Kufni ever becoming a believer in Christ because Wema just died. He, Jesus just let his daughter die. And that's just insane. So uh, I think that this is definitely going to overshadow a lot of the show and change things in a really painful way. Um, and then, uh, you know, one of the things that I was thinking too, when I left the theater was that this is what, one of the craziest things like in any movie or TV show that I've ever like literally ever seen, like crazier than like Thanos snapping half the universe in Avengers infinity war. And, uh, I want to, you know, again, like I said, the more on biblical issues will overlap a little bit. So I'll, I'll get into some of the biblical issues now, but, um, and, you know, I, I might as well talk about them now because they're also important and they go with this. But basically, the reason that this scene is part of the Chosen is because the Chosen creators are trying to force their unbiblical theology onto Jesus. 
And that's just the fact. And let me explain. So basically, the whole theme of this episode is that sometimes we ask God for things and he just doesn't answer. And actually, I think some of the reasoning for this was that Dallas and his wife had an experience where someone asked for healing and they didn't get it. So basically, because of an experience they had, uh, they don't believe in exactly what the Bible says about healing. So if you actually look at the scriptures, every time someone came to Jesus they were, for healing, they were healed. And it was always Jesus' will, will to heal. Acts 10, 38 says he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Sickness and disease were, only came into the world as one of the uh, the, pa- the penalties for sin. And that was that's why sickness and disease in the world, that's why Jesus healed everywhere he went. And God is no respecter of persons. If you look through the Bible in Matthew 8, for example, the leper comes to Jesus. If you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I am willing, be thou made clean. And then other places, every time, continuously, we are told, he healed them all. Jesus healed all that came to him. And uh, and then, in you know, this is obviously, you see it in many places, many other places as well. Um, when the disciples in Matthew 17 couldn't heal a boy or, um, or cast a demon out, they asked Jesus, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we heal him? And Jesus said, it's because of your little faith. So they actually were confused. They couldn't heal someone. They didn't say, hey, was it not your will this time? And it just, you know, you're forcing your theology onto something, onto Jesus. Um, the Bible, conti- Jesus continuously calls healing a good deed. It, you know, in the man with the withered hand, is it lawful to do a good deed on the, sa- on the Sabbath? It continuously says he healed them all. Uh, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, you know, my mission, I'm anointed to preach the gospel, to give sight to the blind and all, and all kinds of other things. Jesus garment healed every single person that touched it. Um, you know, uh, the Bible talks about all the, all, you know, Jesus said, uh, to, to the disciples of John that, uh, you should go and tell John what you see, the dead are raised, the, the blind are healed, you know, all these different people are being healed. And again, this is going to really drain, I think, on the resurrection story of Lazarus, which apparently is coming in the next three episodes. And I think I'm wondering how they're going to pull that off, because the whole point of that story is that Jesus comes and Martha's like, hey, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And so and he's like, yeah, your brother will rise again. And Martha doesn't believe that it's going to happen now. She says, yes, I know he'll rise again in the end which is literally what they're, the point that they're trying to make in this episode, th- that it's not her time. That's, that was such a dumb quote, too. It's not her time, basically. They're, they have this whole theme of asking and not receiving what you ask for in the episode. Um, but, you know, it's not her time. She'll be raised in the end. But that's literally what Martha said. And Jesus says, no, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, will, though he dies, yet he'll live. And then he goes and raises Lazarus from the dead. That's the point. Not... Um, I'm just going to let people die. No, Jesus is the healer. Jesus, and we know that from the Bible in the Old Testament. We know it from the New Testament. The whole of Israel, not one feeble among their tribes. God said in the Old Testament, you know, if you serve me, I will take sickness and disease out of your midst. So they knew what would, what was the, the fact. It, you know, if any of among you is sick, call on the elders of the church, James chapter 5. Even in this show, we see a woman with the issue of, the, of blood come and touch Jesus' garment. And because of her faith, Jesus said, you are healed. That's what the thing is. If you are if you have faith, you will be healed. So faith draws on God's power. The woman with the issue of blood came up, touched Jesus' garment, having faith, and was healed. And that's what should have been done in episode three. Jesus could have healed Rama, or Rama could have uh, just touched Jesus' garment and been healed. Another thing, too, is that this is a completely freak ev- and evil accident. It just, it, and again, it makes you realize that it's just a movie. Basically, uh, Rayma is killed by this evil person. And we know that the Bible says that if you serve God, he'll give you long life. We know that Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have life and life more abundantly. So who killed Rayma? Was it God or was it the thief, the devil? Obviously, it was a demonic act that happened. And Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, 1 John 3. So how can you make it? Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. The devil is death and Jesus brings life. That's a very simple understanding that you should have. And God doesn't 
work with the devil. So when Quintus killed Wema, immediately Jesus should have healed her. And, uh, you know, if, if their message is that, that they're trying to portray is basically that if you're a disciple of Jesus, you can just be stabbed through the stomach at any time. She didn't die as a martyr. She did not die as a martyr. And, she did, and all the disciples lived long, full lives, just about like the Bible says. If you serve God, you'll have a long, prosperous life. That's, a, that's what the Bible says. So you can't tell me that this is biblical in any way, shape, or form. The Bible says you're not die before your time. This is Rhema at 20 years old, and this is Thomas, who's about to want to marry her, and she gets killed. Like, that is the most insane thing, like, ever seen, ever, in a Jesus show. It's just your own foolish theology that you have that's an unbiblical message. And they had that with, you know, little James, and now they're dumb doubling down on it, which is a shame. You know, this is basically saying that... Jesus is sometimes loving and sometimes he's not loving. And Jesus is basically crushing Th Thomas in this moment, which Jesus would not do. Jesus would not crush Thomas's spirits. God's the, God does not tease us. Um, and again, Weymouth's father is going to absolutely freak out to see that Jesus basically took his daughter and he felt in debt to Jesus. He felt in debt to Jesus was the only reason he gave his daughter. And now Weymouth is dead because of Jesus. And, Jesus, and and what about when he finds out, oh, Jesus just stood there and watched. Because the most likely thing in reality, if this ever had happened in real life, would be Thomas would leave, all the disciples would leave, and Thomas would end up telling Coffney what happened. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like I said, um, the disciples would literally be justified in leaving. Which, again, if they're trying to make it that this is the reason Judas... Uh, uh, you know, betrays Jesus, that's going to be hilarious because that was my immediate reaction. This would justify all the disciples just leaving Jesus right now, um, you know, because he's not who he said he was. You said you were the healer. You said you were the Messiah. You said you loved us. And then now you've proven yourself that you actually you don't. So, you know, it's going to make Jesus look extremely bad to him. And again, it's going to make ex Jesus look extremely bad to anyone. Everyone who watches this show, the message that they'll get, it's going to turn off any unbeliever. It's going to turn off anyone that's watching the show, you know, oh, this is actually, this is Jesus. This is what Jesus is like. Because again, if you are making a Jesus show, you must take into account that not every single person that watches this has read the Bible or is going to even read the Bible, even if you tell them to. So you actually take responsibility in your own acts when you make the decision to represent Jesus Christ, whether you want to be called a Jesus show or a Jesus corporation or not. I don't care if that's because J Dallas has made, you know, these statements sometimes like, oh, you know, we're, we're not we're, we're really like something along the lines. Of, I'm, I'm, I'm again, I'm kind of paraphrasing and I, I, excuse me if I misquote him or whatever. But, you know, things along the lines of, you know, we're not really just a, a ministry. We're not really a ministry. Right. But if you make that decision to represent Jesus Christ, you have now taken into your hands the greatest responsibility of any person in any story or uh you know creation or entertainment industry at all so you you are responsible for your actions and again you will stand before god one day so it's your you must be careful with what you do um now you know like i said it's a cheap way of having thomas doubt it's also a cheap way to probably make gaius un go unpunished um and you know, it, it really ruins Jesus' character. It ruins who Jesus Christ is because the Bible says he has compassion. He was compassionate, ver, Bible verse, he was compassionate and so he healed their sick. Some people went out of that theater crying because they felt bad for Thomas. They felt bad for Rhema. And how can human beings have more compassion than the literal son of God? Jesus was very, very compassionate. And he's far more compassionate than we are. So... It just is ridiculous. Jesus would not crush Th Thomas just because J Thomas is asking Jesus would heal Rhema. And uh, some people have probably said, oh, well, it wasn't Rhema asking directly. Well, yeah, she was almost dead. And furthermore, what about, you know, Jairus' daughter? He, his daughter didn't ask Jesus directly. You know, you, you can ask Jesus for things. And then again, you know, they're like trying to make this message of you can't just ask God for things and get what you want. Well, actually, I beg to differ. The Bible says in J the book of John as well, ask whatever you will in the name of of Jesus and it will be done for you. Now, obviously we know we can't ask things against the will of God. We can't ask for things like sinful things and evil things. 
you can ask for anything that is in the word of God and that's anything that is permitted to you biblically. And uh, so that includes healing. You know, that includes, uh, you know, blessing, prosperity as well, because the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Um, so, you know, and that the blessing of the Lord makes a man rich. So you can ask for things that are in the Bible, but you can't go against God's word. Now, you know, it's, it's just hilarious that that was basically the theme of the message is they started with David who sinned against God and was punished for it, asking uh, or praying for his son not to be killed. And that, and, and he died anyway. And, uh, and that was basically the theme of the whole episode. If you don't understand miracles and you don't understand healing, then just stay away from it. Just don't touch it. Just leave it alone, please. And then at least that way, um, you know, you won't mess anything up. You should have just stuck with the Bible and not added in things that are literally anti-biblical. Jesus promises long life, not freak accidents. Um, you know, people's faith grabs healing. That's we, we see that all throughout the Bible. You know, there were so many good scenes with John, Matthew, Peter uh, up until then. That kind of that episode, that scene just kind of ruined it for me. You know, as soon as as I said before, as soon as Jesus ran away, I felt like something was really off. And uh, yeah, again, her her death is really meaningless. Like she's not a martyr. It's just pointless. And the you know, Thomas and Rama again could have won in any direction, but instead they ran straight towards Quintus. As soon as Jesus ran away, there was something really off about that. But then when I saw him turning around, I was like, okay, maybe they'll fix this. Um, and, you know, when he was going to come to heal her, but then he just watches, which is even worse than Jesus just running away. So it's basically morally questionable and then also actually not even morally questionable. It's evil. It basically makes Jesus evil. And it's that's a really horrible thing to watch, which is, again, basically the end result of that Calvinist reformed, you know, version of theology, which is that everything that happens is the will of God, despite the fact that we know it's not from the literal Bible that says that God wills for all people to be saved. And, you know, it's just really painful. It, it kind of makes all evil, attributes all evil and all sickness and all disease and everything to God. And that's just not a, a position you want to be in. Um, it hurts your advance investment in the show, just watching that that scene. And, you know, just, again, Thomas, uh, you know, freaking out and going crazy and being horrified at the sight of this is just a very sick thing. It brings way more context to everything else. It just changes everything. Every other scene you see with Jesus, you know, encouraging them, loving them, helping them to, you know, grow together. It just ruins all of that 100%. And I think, again, this scene, or, or th not this scene, but this um, this part of uh, the show could have been a great moment to actually accurately portray the heart of the father and rushing to save their child, basically, like Jesus com coming to save Rama, and they completely missed it. it, it it's a shame. You know, the, the death of this girl in her 20s, again, you're, you have to think of it from a, a position of like, this is representing Jesus. Like they actually think this is plausible. It, it, this death of a girl in her twenties is not the work of God. She had a bright future. Uh, she had a marriage ahead of her. Uh, she was serving God, you know, like it, it, that's the crazy thing. All these people come to serve Jesus. And it's like, Oh yeah, actually you, you can just die at any point. This is just, like from nothing. Like in your twenties, you can just die. You have a bright future ahead of you. And, it, it, you know, it's, it, it, that's just, it's all ridiculous. Um, you know, it's ruining the show and it's absolutely ruining, uh, the, the character of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, and then again, like this could have been a great opportunity to show and accurately portray biblical marriage. It, it just wasn't necessary. You know, the, the Bible doesn't say that Thomas was not married. It actually says that many of the disciples were married. And in light of what is about to happen with Lazarus, what is Thomas going to think? This is absolutely insane. You know, he wouldn't heal my, my wife because he, he didn't care about her. But he actually cares about Lazarus, especially if they're going to go to route, which again is unbiblical, actually, uh, of Jesus, like, crying for Lazarus, right? Because for Lazarus' death, actually, if you read the context, Jesus was weeping because the people wouldn't believe him, believe in his power, and believe that, you know, he could raise Lazarus from the dead. But if they're going to go that route, which I guess they will, since we've seen a pretty depressing version of Jesus f throughout this season anyway, 
then it's going to ruin everything be- uh, again and make Regis even more questionable because it's like, oh, he cares about Lazarus, but he doesn't care about Rayma. And that's just a, a, a terrible position to put Jesus in. It's just it, it, the whole sh- episode made me feel like Thomas is really getting the short end of the stick, you know. Um, and it's the same stupid, you know, theme of why didn't he heal me? Basically, you're just putting on um, your modern day, you know, like your modern day feelings and modern day um you know, idea of how things work. Oh, I see this person not healed. I see that person not healed. And just attributing that to the will of God or to the the word of God, which it's not supposed to be there, you know. And then Jesus is the one who called Wema. You know, if you go back like to episode whatever five, he didn't just call Thomas. He actually called Thomas and Wema. And when and I when I was looking at Luke 8, you know, obviously the women that followed Jesus and supported his ministry, I thought they were going to add more women. I thought we didn't actually have enough. I didn't know they were going to actually just subtract women, like Rayma. Like, oh, she's an extra biblical character, so she's expendable. Like, what? You know, if you're going to add new characters to the show, don't just throw them away randomly just because you feel like it. Like, actually add some depth and show how Jesus would have actually interacted with them, not just let them die. And Jesus literally called Rayma. And she could have been, again, this is the thing, like, she could have been a disciple, she could have, and stayed a disciple, and been a missionary to various parts of the earth. We know God's will is not for death. So when Jesus was on the earth, you know, again, he eradicated death, he eradicated suffering, he called sickness and disease works of the devil, where he says, you know, this woman who's bent double for 17 years, whom Satan has bound, he's always healing people. Everyone you know, in the scriptures, because people are using different things, different examples. Um, and I know I'm going to probably get this on this video of like, oh, well, Jesus didn't heal John the Baptist or, oh, Jesus didn't heal Elisha because he died of a sickness. No, Jesus wasn't there. <laughs> First, let me get something straight into your head. You are walking with the assumption that everything that happens is the will of God, which we know it's not. Because from the beginning, man has had free will and sickness and disease is an effect of sin. And we know what God's will is. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. However heaven is, we know that that's what God's, where God's will is done. And that's what he wants the earth to be like. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no disease in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. And that's how it was in the beginning in the Garden of Eden as well. So, uh, you know, you basically, because of your theology, that just God predetermines every event and, you know, whatever, and everything that happens is the will of God, you've completely twisted what the Bible says. And that's and you've basically given evil and attributed evil and all the evil acts of the world to God, which is just a horribly ridiculous thing to do. Um, so, you know, and then we see in the Bible that all the disciples, they lived their life. They lived to the full. You know, the Bible says, if you obey me, I will give you long life. I will bless you with long life. At Psalm 91, you know, I, I, will, satis- I will show him long life and satisfy him um, and show him my salvation. So we see what God's will and God's plan actually is, and we see that in the life of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the express image of God's nature. Whatever he saw the Father do, he did also, which again is why it's weird that there's this f- fighting of wills between the Father and the Son because it's like Jesus wanted to heal Wema, but then he felt not to, and he felt bad for Thomas, but he it was like he was restrained or something. Like what? You're restrained from healing people? You're restrained from saving lives all of a sudden? Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost and to heal the sick. Luke 4, what is his mission? I came to, to set liberty, the captives, open the eyes of the blind, right? We see what Jesus' um, mission was. And we see that continually he uh, works, you know, salvation and healing together, it's the same, it works, to, it comes together, which is easier to say, uh, be your sins are forgiven, or rise up and walk, you know, when he, when he went to the cross, his, he, he died on the cross for our sins, but in Isaiah 53, and in other places, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, it tells us that by his stripes, the stripes he took, the whip, the lashings that he took, we are healed, Jesus fulfilled that, and then it says, Matthew 8, 17, it quotes that, that he did all this in the last eight, uh, one to 17 verses about healing to fulfill that word that he took our, 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 uh, diseases, bore our sufferings. So, 
it, it, it you know you can't force some unbiblical theology on it on the, on the word of god and just expect it to work it doesn't work and i am worried about how this scene's going to affect mary i'm worried about how it's going to affect thomas all the other disciples you know jesus we told you this was a bad idea we told you we shouldn't go out there gaius said it everyone said it and then we went out there just to mess with some pharisees and one of our disciples got killed like imagine that it's it's horrific and again, it's going to be hilarious if they make Judas, if they actually make Judas betray Jesus because of this. And I'm hoping that's not what they do. But again, I might have more thoughts after I watch episodes four to six. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. This literally could have been avoided by literally moving outside town for Jesus to preach. Could have been avoided if Thomas and Raymond went in a different direction. Like what if Thomas and Raymond went in a direct, different direction? Would you just walk up to him and be like, nope, it was actually your time to die. Here's a sword. I'm stabbing you through. Like, no, that's ridiculous. It's like absolutely ridiculous. And again, it's that stupid same thing that free will doesn't exist that's in B Baptist theology, basically. And there's a part of me, you know, final thoughts on this. There's a part of me that hates this. And then also a part of me that wants a lot of people to realize the idiocy of this doctrine through this. Because that Calvinist theology is just so unbiblical so against what the bible says it's just it it really is you know it's really important to point out which again if you're calvinist i'm not against you i hope you're getting a lot out of this video but it's just really crazy and it's just painful and then again jesus basically makes this false promise to thomas because he's basically saying oh you're gonna get married yeah you're gonna get married go get a go get a um a you know a gift for rhema and then she dies. So it is a false promise because Jesus is basically teasing him. He's like leading him to do something because they're going to get married. And then she dies and he lets her die. Because if this was real, even if God's, if this was real, if God's will really was for sickness and disease, God would have told Jesus, hey, how about you don't encourage their marriage? Because she's just going to randomly in a tragic accident by an evil man get stabbed through with a sword. Like, come on. Jesus promises healing, which again is another false promise because Jesus promises healing to everyone. The Bible says God's no respecter of persons. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he says to one, he'll say to all. And, you know, it doesn't change. That doesn't change. It's available to every single person who asks and who has faith. So it, it all really stems from poor Bible understanding. And we know that Jesus is a, a compassionate person. We know that Jesus loves us. He's for us. He's not against us. And this show is basically uh, putting forth this idea that he's not really for us. He Sometimes he loves us. Sometimes he doesn't love us. And that I'm not saying that that was necessarily their intention, which I don't think it was. But I'm just saying that that, that is basically what it puts forth. It really is, turns off unbelievers. And it really puts forth this message of that Jesus actually doesn't, he just doesn't care. That's the message it puts forth. Jesus doesn't care. He's not touched by your weaknesses. Like it says in Hebrews 4, um, 14, he just doesn't actually care. And uh, that's just a shame that that's the message you're putting forth. So anyway, um, you know, that's, that's my thoughts. I think, again, it's going to mess up the resurrection of Lazarus. Because Martha, you know, obviously Martha says, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. She knew that if Jesus is around, there's going to be healing. There's not going to be death. She knew it for a fact. That's why Jesus couldn't come. And, you know, that's why Jesus couldn't come. That's important to, to mention. The reason Jesus stayed away from Lazarus for three days while he was dying, if he had been there, he would not have told them that, hey, I'm just not healing him. Because he didn't say that. He never told anyone that. He was gone. He was in another, another town while Lazarus was dying. Then he showed up. Then Lazarus got raised from the dead. That shows Jesus transcends time and space. And even if someone dies, he can raise him from the dead. So same with Rhema. You know, same with Rhema. Even if she had died in Thomas's arms and Jesus hadn't been there, what they should have done is just have Jesus show up immediately after her death and boom, raise her from the dead. And that's what would have made, made things so much better. There's so many stories in the gospel, several stories in the gospels where Jesus raises people from the dead. It says in one place, because he had compassion on the woman, he raised them from the dead, uh, her, her son from the dead. So what makes Rama any different? Nothing. And again, God is no respecter of persons. That means what he does for one person, he is willing to do for all people. 
and Jesus never changes. So anyway, that's just my thoughts. I think it's a sad thing that they're also, I think some people are probably going to be upset just because they killed off a character who they really liked and Thomas and Raymond aren't going to get their wedding. Um, I think that it's also kind of crazy. You know, again, like Paul said that the disciples were married or at least most of them in first Corinthians nine. So, you know, we know that this kind of does break canon because it's going to ruin the rest of Thomas's life and all the disciples. They are obviously breaks canon because they would have all left him at that point, but, or just done something else or, you know, given up, they wouldn't be, have stayed as strong anymore. But it just, it, you know, it, again, it's just really crazy. And hope, hopefully this is the only video I have to make on this. But maybe I'll have more thoughts after I watch the next three episodes. I didn't really watch Dallas' response on things. So maybe I'll have a, a little bit more to say in the future. But that's basically just my thoughts. And uh, I hope you all learned something today. I hope you could uh, listen to my thoughts without getting upset. If the creators are watching, I don't hate you. I just hope that... Uh, you can fix some things in this crazy situation that you've created for yourselves. And I hope to see how well you can dig yourself out of this massive gaping hole that you've created in the next three seasons of the show. Uh, good luck. And uh, yeah, goodbye. <laughs>